Today we're going to replace the wiring on our trailer here. What we're going to deal with is a, replacing a four pole flat. As you can tell, this one's been pretty been beaten up and worn, so this has got to be replaced. What's going to happen is we're going to cut this wire off, we're going to replace this ground wire also. And what we're going to do is cut this loose and then we'll pull the rest of our wire through. Now on this trailer here, it's pretty well open so we can reach the wiring, but just in case if your wiring was ran in conduit and you replace it, don't pull all this out yet. We'll actually tie on the new wire and we'll use this wire to pull it on through. We're going to cut off all this old wire here and we're going to take off this old light tube. Well, let's point out something to our four pole flat we have here. If you notice the wires, there's actually five wires coming out. What's happening is, is that on the inside of this pin here, this is for a running light, we've actually got two wires coming out. What the, what the reason for that is, is that we can split the running light circuit so it'll go down both sides of the trailer. Mainly that's used on boat trailers and some other dude light duty trailers. What's nice about that is that if you have a running light on the side, chances are you're gonna run a wiring right next to it and you can tap into your wiring without having to actually make a wire going all the way across. Say if, say if you, for instance, you ran your wire just to one side. So it provides a little bit of shortcut. In this case, we'll go ahead, we're gonna actually run it all the way one side and jump over since we got such a small trailer and no running lights anyway. Now we're gonna go ahead and just tape up our new wires to our old wires here and just pull it on through the frame. It doesn't take much, just a little bit, keep it all nice and smooth so it doesn't get hung up. Then we just simply pull the wire through. Before we pull everything through, we're going to make at least make sure we have enough leader to hang out. And this unit comes with a pre-wired ground wire, so we're going to just leave it at its maximum length. This is where we're going to ground it at, so we have a good idea how much slack we need to leave. And at this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and tape up all these wires together. That way, it'll keep it from getting tangled up with anything else. Since we got our ground here, we're going to go ahead and, and ground it, but we're actually going to take this loop off and put on a smaller loop. Since we have an existing ground that works pretty good, it's just use a smaller screw. Always give them a twist when you crep it down. It'll make a nice tight fit. We're gonna reinstall our screw, but first we're gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease on there. Just help protect it a little bit. Because even the ground, electricity still flows, so less rust the better. Okay. Now we can go ahead and pull the rest of our slack out. We got our lights pulled over to the left hand side. We're using the yellow and the brown, yellow for left turn. And what we need to do is cut this wire to length, about a half inch three, to a three eighths of an inch. Always want to twist the wires, makes them strong. And these wires actually get stuck inside here. There's a little strip in there that pushes against it. And when you pull it back, it catches so the wire can't come out and makes electrical contact. So you bottom out the plastic and then give it a little bit of pull back and it catches. Do the same thing with the left turn signal. And if you notice, it's kind of hard to see, but there's, there's two holes side by side here. You could actually jump another wire from this hole here to another light. So it acts like a miniature junction box. And then this little channel here just hides the wire. So when you push it up against your frame, it won't get mashed. And your light gets installed just like that. Before we bolt on our light, we're actually going to clean this area out of the holes where the nuts go onto. That way it makes a good metal to metal contact. Get rid of rust and corrosion. Now you do this through a file or simply scrape it if you're in a hurry, but you can use a, something a little more abrasive. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to get these super tight, just snug, and it'll be just fine. Again, we're going to use the old wire, pull our new wire through. Now we're back on the right side of the trailer. We'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll run our wires and reinstall new light. Install our wiring. 
Green for the right turn. Brown for running light. One of our final touches will be actually run some uh, loom clamps to the wire to keep it up closer to the bed. It doesn't touch anything, but it's better to keep it out of the way. So we're running a couple, like I said, some loom clamps up there. At this point, we'll go ahead and rear assemble our trailer, and then we'll go ahead and test out the lighting. Okay, we got our trailer wired up. Let's go give it a test run here. Notice we didn't connect the truck to a trailer because we want to make sure our ground wire is working. It's not a good idea to ground through the ball because it can be intermittent from bouncing around going down the road. For our first test, we'll start off with the running lights. We got running lights. Okay, let's check our left turn signal. Okay. We'll do the same thing for the right side. Okay, our running lights on the right side. And then we'll go do our turn signal. All right, now we'll do our brakes. And there you have it for our install of our trailer wiring harness. And by the way, that part number was 475550. And the taillights we used, the left-hand side was part number 440L, and the right-hand side was 440.